All right, Toolock, I sent that graphic over. Perfect. Thank you, Joe Cat from the Joe Cat YouTube channel. I will start putting that on all of the thumbnails right away. Thumbnails? Like, plural. How many videos do you plan on putting these on? Yeah, just like one or two. Let's start off with our goals for this build. First, we need that Krogan charge with the ability to put our head down, then put our enemies down. Next, we need some biotic buffs with the ability to pull and lift our enemies. Finally, Thresher Maws are best taken out from a distance, so we'll load up with some firepower. For stats, we'll be using the standard point array from the player's handbook. Roll for stats if you want, just make sure that you're extra thick. Constitution will be number one. Krogan are the only ones who can deal with the Rachni, both because of their skin and the poison resistance. Strength next, I'm not totally sure what a shoulder tackle would be. I just know we're gonna need strength for it. Dexterity after that, you shoot more than you punch, so maybe it should be higher. We just don't need it for heavy armor like we do strength. Follow that up with intelligence. You've got high-tech weaponry in space. For some reason, it gets upgraded to require ammo, even though it didn't in the first game. Technology. Wisdom is a bit low. You can be hot-headed, but we'll dump charisma. Other than intimidation, you're not much of a chatterbox. Lots of people have suggested Tortle for Krogan, but they're too focused on the Krogan lips. Krogans in Mass Effect are literally never shown without their armor. Tortles can't wear armor. Krogan also don't have sharp claws, or shells that they can retreat into, or as far as I know, the ability to hold their breath for a really long time. They're really good at closing gaps and being big though, and the other races of the universe bully them for being too good at fighting. To me, that sounds like an orc. Orcs get plus two strength and plus one constitution. 60 feet of dark vision, aggressive to move up to your movement speed as a bonus action towards an enemy for a Krogan charge, and the primal intuition ability from the Eberron orc for two skills of your choice from a small list. Medicine and survival will help your people survive, both by not dying and also understanding the land. You've got a powerful build doubling your carrying capacity so you can literally put the team on your back. For your background, soldier works, giving you proficiency with athletics and intimidation, as well as ground vehicle proficiency, but don't mention that, someone might ask you to drive the Mako. We'll kick things off as a fighter, letting us grab two skills from the fighter list. History and perception are useful for remembering what the Salarians and Turians did to you and finding where they are to kick their butts. For your fighting style, unarmed fighting lets you deal 1d6 bludgeoning damage with your unarmed attacks, and 1d8 if you've got two free hands. You deal 1d4 bludgeoning damage when you grapple people, and an extra d4 of damage when you attack a grappled target. Unarmed attacks don't have to be punches, it's just hitting someone with a part of your body. Headbutts and shoulder slams would count. Archery would be a nice fighting style, but unarmed fighting buffs unarmed fighting more than archery bumps archery, if that makes sense. You also get second wind, letting you heal 1d10 plus your fighter level as a bonus action once per short rest. Your physiology has some regenerative capabilities for sure. Second level fighters get action surge, letting you make two actions in one turn once per short rest. Run forward shooting, then tackle someone to the ground in a way that only you can. Actually, you can't attack with your bonus action. We'll get something for that. Third level fighters can unlock some biotics with the Cyanite subclass. You get a psionic energy die, which which is a d6 but the cool kids call it a side eye you've got a number of these equal to double your proficiency bonus per long rest and can use them on things like a protective field that'll reduce incoming damage on a creature within 30 feet of you by the side eye plus your intelligence modifier as a reaction to throw up a little barrier you could also add the die plus your intelligence modifier in force damage to one attack per round for a little warp energy or just move a creature 30 feet as an action once per short rest for free but future uses are going to cost you one of those side eyes don't worry though, you can still recover one side eye as part of a bonus action once per short rest as well, so you should be able to use these pretty frequently. Four level fighters get another ability score improvement or a feat. The charge of feet lets you attack as a bonus action after you take the dash action and deal an extra five damage or shove 10 feet instead of the standard five if someone's close to a cliff. You can use this with action surge to shoot, close the distance, and attack again. Fifth level fighters get an extra attack, letting you attack twice with your action instead of once unless you're using a crossbow of some kind, then you'd have to reload. Unless you had the crossbow expert feat, which lets you fire multiple shots in the same round with a crossbow and even make an attack with a bonus action as a hand crossbow if you'd rather use a heavy pistol. And you can fire within five feet without disadvantage, but we can't get that yet, so just enjoy your side die bumping up to a D8. Sixth level fighters get an ability score improvement, but we're actually gonna grab the crossbow expert feat since I described what it does last level. I don't think I need to describe it again, especially since I like to give it to 
every character with a gun. Also, if your DM puts guns in their setting, just use a gun, that's fine. I just don't know if they're gonna allow that. Seventh level Cyanites get some abilities from Telekinetic Adept, like Psionic Thrust, to force a creature you hit with your Telekinetic Strike to make a strength saving throw. Failing that, they're knocked prone or they fly 10 feet in a direction of your choice. With the Charger combo, you can move someone 20 feet in a single round, that's pretty good. Psy Powered Leap lets you use your side eye to give yourself a flying speed equal to double your walking speed for one round to fully yeet yourself across the map as a bonus action. This is another one that you can do once per short rest for free before you start spending your side eye. And really, who doesn't want to see a Krogan fly? 8th level fighters get an ability score improvement, let's get that dexterity modifier up for better shots. 9th level fighters get indomitable, letting you re-roll a failed saving throw once per long rest for some real Krogan endurance. 10th level cyanites get guarded mind, giving you resistance to psychic damage and you can remove an effect of frightening or charming by using your side eye. That's probably why the Krogan were so good at fighting the Rachni, other than, you know, being huge. 11th level fighters get another extra attack for 3 attacks per round or 6 attacks with your action surge. Keep in mind this only applies to attack actions, not bonus action attacks from charger or hand crossbow bonus action shots. It's still good, just not super busted. Your side eye now also is a d10. 12th level fighters get another ability score improvement. Guns are your best option, so more dexterity is what I'll recommend. Rex might not seem like the most nimble guy, but he's got some moves. 13th level fighters get another use of Indomitable. Fighters aren't very complicated, but hey, neither are you. Nothing wrong with getting things done quickly and effectively. 4th level fighters get another ability score improvement. Get that dexterity higher, it started a little low, but if we're slow and steady, we'll get it capped, like a turtle. So that and the mount, those are the turtle things for Krogan. 15th level Cyanites get Bulwark of Force, giving a number of creatures equal to your intelligence modifier within 30 feet of you the benefit of half cover for a minute, once per short rest for free, and again if you reduce the size of your side eye. We don't talk about cover a lot here, but half cover gives a creature plus two to their AC and advantage on dexterity saving throws. You're gonna be very good at avoiding explosions, even though I think Rex would be more likely to tank through a fireball than dive out of the way. 16th level fighters get another ability score improvement, cap off your dexterity and move on to your intelligence. Honestly, we're kind of done with strength. Charging is good, but when you're fighting robot Cthulhu, guns and biotics are going to be much more effective than tackling. 17th level fighters get another use of action surge and indomitable. You can't use action surge twice in the same turn, but you can use it two turns in a row, which can really affect the outcome of a battle, especially with all of your attacks. Your side eye also bumps up to a d12. That's gotta be helpful. 18th level cyanites are telekinetic masters, letting you cast the spell telekinesis by reducing the size of your side eye. This lets you make an intelligence check against another creature's strength check. Failing that, you can move the target 30 feet on your turn, and there restrain, giving you and your squad advantage on attacks against them. You can also use it to lift objects that weigh 1,000 pounds or less, but you can only lift one thing at a time, so pick and choose for the 10 minute duration. 19th level fighters get our last ability score improvement or feat. You might as well take the resilient feat for intelligence, not only to round up the modifier, but also to give yourself proficiency with the saving throws. Feeble mind is nasty. Nobody's going to be messing with your head. Our capstone is the 20th level of fighter for another extra attack. With 4 attacks using your action, 8 attacks with action surge, or 9 attacks with a bonus action attack from a hand crossbow, if you don't mind keeping it light. Now that we've hit level 20, let's figure out how viable this build is. First, you've got a lot of attacks, and a capped shooting modifier to send out some very consistent damage. You're also a great tank with around 180 HP, 3 uses of indomitable, 20 AC with the bulwark up, and ways to reduce damage with your side eye. Finally, a lot of your psychic barriers can be given to your team as well, making you a great buddy to have on the squad. For weaknesses, investing in strength and dexterity is always hard to do, but it's even worse when your subclass also asks for intelligence. You're just spread too thin, focusing more on being an archer would make you deal more damage. This also stops you from being as tanky as you could be. The charge of feet is in character, but the tough feet would be much better, and it would help you fill the role of damage sponge more effectively. Finally, even with Indomitable, you could be failing some wisdom and charisma saving throws pretty regularly. Hold person and banishment are never a good time, but you don't don't need charisma, that's what Shepard's for. Use your Krogan muscle to bust down doors, light up foes, and throw people around with your biotics. Just hope that Shepard really does have enough charisma. I feel like if they're not good at talking, you could be the one paying the price. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, subscribe for more. We're making a new video every day this month. Special thanks to Joe Cat for guesting in this video. Go check out his channel where he's got a spicy new video coming out.